I would have to tell you. You have bewitched me, body and soul. Let me just bring you here for one quick second. Welcome to my bed. This whole shelf right here is my Austin shelf. Austin and a couple other classics too. I have Northanger Abbey, Persuasion, Emma, Sense and Sensibility, and Pride and Prejudice. I love Jane Austen and it's like a huge goal of mine to read all of her novels. The ones that I have read are these two, Emma and Sense and Sensibility. These are probably two of my favorite books of all time. After reading these two, I started reading Pride and Prejudice, so famous, but I actually have never read this entire book. When I picked this up, it ended up moving, so I ended up not being able to finish this. And you can see where I got up to. And I've always been meaning to to like finish the book and finish annotating it. I was like, perfect. Let me read and annotate Pride and Prejudice for the very first time. Now that I have my channel, I can actually film doing the whole thing, which I feel like is so special because I know Pride and Prejudice is beloved by so many people and I'm like the biggest hopeless romantic I've ever met. I'm gonna reread this from the beginning. I'm like curious about what I wrote because I forget what I wrote. All of my little commentary, I literally wrote so much. And I'm going to just continue my annotation process. Everybody tells me that, Sunny, you will love Pride and Prejudice. Let me get all my annotations done. I am not a fancy book annotator. Oh, not my sticky. You know bookmark. So I actually got quite a way through. I was like around halfway. These are the Crayola super tips. I like using this as highlighter because I can't find my other highlighters. I don't know which one I'm gonna use. Pen, I literally use anything. Oh, I have this blue one, so maybe I'll use that. So I'm gonna get ready. We're gonna start Pride and Prejudice. I'm so excited. But first, because I have COVID. This is coughing medicine. Ugh. <laughs> now let's start reading. So I just finished chapter one and I also think that I decided I'm going to be using this pink as the highlighter for this round This is kind of like what it looks like Mr. Darcy soon drew the attention of the room by his fine tall person handsome features Oh, and here's the iconic she's tolerable, but not handsome enough to tempt me pack it up Darcy love love you The start of it all. Okay, so I just finished chapter 5 last night at the ball Mr. Darcy sat close to Lizzie for half an hour without once opening his lips Everyone's like, oh my gosh, he's so rude, but literally no, he's just so in love with her So socially awkward doesn't know what to do with himself. I forgot how much I love Jane Austen So we're starting chapter 8 Enough said. Also, I think my pen just ran out of ink, so I now need to find a new pen. Hello. Nice. Bingley's sister has the audacity. Eliza Bennett is one of those young ladies who seek to recommend themselves to the other sex by undervaluing their own. I wrote, no, she's not a pick-me girl. Baby, don't get it twisted. I love Lizzie. No Lizzie slander. Ah! I literally highlighted every single time you catch Darcy randomly lingering, staring at her for some reason. She's like, oh, it's because there must be something extra wrong with me, but no. It's because he's a little panicked boy who like doesn't know what to do. He's just like looking at her from across the schoolyard. He likes her so much. Let's do a quick flip through of the first little bit of Pride and Prejudice. Here I said, hmm, could you possibly be falling in love? Oh my gosh, no, this page. Uh oh. Gosh, what a fail. I literally recorded so much and I literally didn't hit record. Basically, I'm charging my headphones because they ran out of battery. Literally so much has happened. First of all, my book is literally falling apart. Look at this. Um, anyway, this part was making me actually- <laughs> Elizabeth had been at Netherfield long enough. She attracted him more than he liked, beginning to determine not to fix his eyes on Elizabeth. The angst, more Mr. Wickham, boo, tomato, tomato. Not him playing the nice guy. Let me just recount my whole TED talk about why Mr. Darcy being so caring towards his little sister is the most attractive thing I've ever read about in my entire life. Anytime that they talk about Mr. Darcy and his little sister or things that he does to take care of his sister, I don't know. Definitely have a thing for older brothers because I'm the youngest in my family. So like anytime I see anyone being like an older sibling, it just... <sighs> older brothers hit so different. <laughs> my favorite part, of course. <laughs> the first dance book is literally falling apart. Look at this. The angst and conversation they have when they're like dancing at the ball makes me so sad that I don't live in Regency, England so that I can experience something like this. I just want to experience something like this just once in my life, please. It's your turn to say something now, Mr. Darcy. I talked about the dance that you ought to make some kind of remark on the size of the room or the number of couples. And then this conversation when they're talking about books, oh my god. What I would give to have like a banter about reading or books or... <gasps> Literally what I would... 
I do not get it at all. I hear such different accounts of you as puzzle me exceedingly. It's giving Will Herondale. I don't know why I love characters like this. I don't know. Fictional men who are just huge question mark. Everything is not. Anyway, those are my updates for right now. Just know that this page, literally my favorite. Chapter 19 was the whole hot mess that was Mr. Collins' proposal to Lizzie. The delusion in this proposal is just so astronomical. <laughs> We finally got to chapter 29. Got to my sticky note. I'm gonna stop there for tonight. I'll pick this up tomorrow for day two of Pride and Prejudice. Watch, oh, I do a transition. Okay, good morning everybody welcome to day two of pride and prejudice weekend what no it's actually monday and we got to the proposal scene chapter 34 and oh my god the entire time i'm just like "Ooh, darcy you are digging yourself deeper into the hole my friend let's talk about how darcy was literally so in love with elizabeth but didn't know what to do so he just kept awkwardly bumping into her when she would go on walks and charlotte knows everything oh i wonder why he's here all the time it's probably because of you elizabeth and elizabeth's like what here oh my gosh it's the love confession scene in vain have i struggled it will not do my feelings will not be repressed you must allow me to tell you how ardently i admire and love you ardently but then also not him insulting every part of elizabeth's life and family what is with these disgusting men in these regency times So I think that I'm officially at the halfway mark. I'm 50% of the way through the audiobook. Here I am, I think. Halfway point. Little do you know. Ah, it's the letter C. The letter C. Darcy. I still don't really like his explanation and the reasons why he kind of did what he did. So I just finished chapter 36, on to chapter 37 now, but chapter 36 is kind of the game changer chapter where we see finally she's doing a little self-reflection and I'm ready for Lizzie's character development. You know what? It's okay. It's okay to have to reach rock bottom a little bit in order to be humbled a little bit. She grew absolutely ashamed of herself. How despicably have I acted? Courted prepossession and ignorance and driven reason away. Till this moment, I never knew myself. Is that an airplane? Do you guys hear that? Okay, I'm so proud of Lizzie. And oh my gosh, we are past halfway point now. On to the rest. Okay, hello. I'm back a long while later. I ended up having to randomly do some school stuff. I'm going to keep reading Pride and Prejudice. I have, I'm this far into the book. When in Rona. Cheers. Kombe. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, I'm on chapter 39. Happy to announce, ladies and gentlemen, that money moves have been made. Just finished chapter 43. These past few chapters were when they went to Pemberley Estate, which is Darcy's like childhood home where he and Mr. Wickham grew up. And they thought that, oh, he wasn't going to be there. But surprise, he comes. Lizzie and Darcy meet each other. And it's like, oh awkward because they really haven't settled things the fact that this is literally my favorite trope ever of like the misunderstood trope. everybody's like oh he hates everybody but no he's actually a softie and it's very telling when you go to his childhood home and you speak to someone who only knew him since his childhood and in this case it's the housekeeper and you just hear stories from when he was like a little boy and he was actually the sweetest boy ever and, and this is the part where they go to pemberley and they hear all about darcy from his childhood the true mr darcy mrs reynolds only has amazing things to say i do not know who is good enough for him i have never had a crossword from him in my life and i have known him ever since he was four years old ah i love him i love him and i've always observed that they who are good natured when children are good natured when they grow up and he was always the sweetest tempered and most generous hearted boy in the world elizabeth almost stared at her can this be mr darcy it's the real Mr. Darcy. He is certainly a good brother. And then Mrs. Reynolds is like, and this is always the way with him. Whatever can give his sister any pleasure is sure to be done in a moment. There's nothing he would not do for her. 
I literally wrote older brother, underline, underline, underline. And older brothers are always gonna be it for me. And then she looks at a portrait of Mr. Darcy. She stood several minutes before the picture in earnest contemplation and returned to it again before they quitted the library. And I wrote something stirring. Here it is, the moment, the moment everything has changed. Their eyes instantly met and the cheeks of each were overspread with the deepest blush. Never had he spoken with such gentleness as on this unexpected meeting. I think that after he had the reality check, after she rejected his proposal, oh, this is how people perceive me and he's kind of acting like himself again. And then he asked her to meet his sister. I'm like, this is huge. His wish of introducing his sister to her was a compliment of the highest kind. And then said, Mr. Darcy handed the ladies into the carriage. I said, this reminds me of the hand scene, the famous hand scene from the movie. It's chapter 45 now, and the way that Darcy has been like talking about Lizzie to his sister, you've done been exposed, Darcy. And this is when finally I feel like Lizzie is putting her heart to him and kind of admitting the fact that she might just be in love with him. Gratitude not merely for having once loved her, but for loving her still well enough to forgive all the petulance and acrimony of her manner in rejecting him. Although I will say that I feel like Darcy has some stuff to repent for too. Ardent love. <laughs> And also, we are almost on the book, by the way. I'm gonna finish this baby, let's do this. I just got to chapter 47, but a lot of stuff has happened. Lydia ended up running away with Mr. Wickham and everybody's so stressed out. And I'm like literally so obsessed. Like this is like Darcy's touch her and I kill you moment. Cause Elizabeth just got these letters from Jane. She's freaking out. As she reached the door, it was opened by a servant and Mr. Darcy appeared. Her pale face and impetuous manner made him start. She's not looking good and he's like floundering. He's so cute. And literally my favorite part, Darcy made no answer. He seemed scarcely to hear her and was walking up and down the room in earnest meditation his brow contracted, his air gloomy, and I'm like, ah! It's giving, touch her and I kill you, I want to take care of her. With only one serious parting look, he went away. Mr. Collins? Can we talk about Mr. Collins' letter? The filthy cousin? Oh my god. Let me just find it. The death of your daughter would have been a blessing in comparison to this. I was just like, ew, what the F is this, Colin? Literally hate him. And then this part where we get the letter from the uncle who found Lydia. This, this, this is what we need for her to get married. And then everybody's like, oh, why is it like not that much? Mr. Wickham is such a gold digger. There's no way that he would marry Lydia with just what he's asking for. And they're like, oh, our uncle paid like the difference. And it's a lot of money. Like, wow, he's so nice, so generous. But no, I already know because I watched the movie that actually Mr. Darcy is the one who actually paid the difference and paid for their wedding on to chapter 50 Oh my gosh, look guys, we're literally in the home stretch. Really just look at how much I highlighted on this page It can only mean one thing basically this letter from her aunt is explaining literally all because of Mr Darcy that Lydia and Mr. Wickham was able to get married She would not place herself as his principal inducement. And I write no, it's actually the exact opposite It's actually because he just loves you. She read over her aunt's commendation of again and again. Oh my gosh, at the end of the letter where she's like, will you be very angry if I take this opportunity to say what I was never bold enough to say before, how much I like him. I thought him very sly. He hardly ever mentioned your name, but slyness seems the fashion. Like Mrs. Gardner knows what's up. I trust the gardeners, literally the most reasonable people in this entire book. And now we just got to chapter 55, but can we just talk about how much tension is in the scene or when Mr. Bingley and Mr. Darcy are here and it's the first time that they're gonna see each other after the game changer. The whole family still doesn't like Darcy still thinks that he's the prideful man that they all thought that he was but he's actually the person to whom the whole family were indebted she had ventured only one look at darcy he looks serious as usual i think that it's just because he's super super nervous of course he's staring at the ground like literally elizabeth dared not lift her eyes this scene and they're literally just watching each other all through dinner or at least lizzie is watching him and mr darcy is doing everything that he can to not look at lizzie she would at times have given anything to be privileged to tell him that his kindness was neither unknown nor unfelt by the whole of the family Tell him. She followed him with her eyes, envied everyone to whom he spoke. Literally tension, the following eyes and the longing looks. They were confined for the evening at different tables and she had nothing to hope but that his eyes were so often turned towards her side of the room. I'm like, I'm sure that they were. So I got to the part where Lady Catherine de Bourgh visits Elizabeth and has the has the caucasity to confront her because of rumors of the fact that her and Mr. Darcy is kind of a thing. I feel like I'll start crying and throwing up if I was in her position, but I now have nothing further to say. You have insulted me in every possible method. I only resolve to act in that manner, which will, in my own opinion, constitute my happiness without reference to you or to any person so wholly unconnected with me. I just love that. I wrote it in the margin, but I just love how all the Austin heroines, at least the ones that I've read, always end up choosing their happiness in the 
end over what other people think, what society thinks. Then I just love that they always end up protecting their peace. So I wrote, protect your peace, Elizabeth Bennet. Uh, I don't know. I just love it so much. Can you tell me an Austin girl? I'm actually an Austin girl so bad. I feel like there's like such a correlation between being like a Taylor Swift girl and a book girl and being an Austin girl. At least so close to the end, you guys. Oh my gosh, sorry. I needed to pick up my camera because <laughs> I can't even handle myself. I am literally, chapter 58 is the chapter. <laughs> It's like the confession scene. I can no longer help thanking you for your unexampled kindness to my poor sister. Finally! If you will thank me, let it be for yourself alone. Hold on. Your family owe me nothing. Much as I respect them, I believe I thought only of you! Are you literally kidding me? I'm actually losing my mind right now. He thought only of her. Don't thank me, your family owes me nothing. I didn't do it for them, I did it for you! Oh my god. Listen. The love confession scene to end all love confession scenes if your feelings are still what they were last april tell me so at once my affections and wishes are unchanged one word from you will silence me on this subject forever he expressed himself on the occasion as sensibly and as warmly as a man violently in love can be supposed to do are you kidding me violently in love violently in love violently in love if you are not ardently and violently in love what are you Mm, this will not do. Had Elizabeth been able to encounter his eyes, she might have seen how well the expression of heartfelt delight diffused over his face. This is literally the best love confession scene I've ever read in my entire life. And this love confession scene. Oh my god. God. They walked on without knowing in what direction. There was too much to be thought and felt and said for attention to any other objects. Oh my gosh. My behavior to you at that time, it was unpardonable. I cannot think of it without abhorrence. Exactly. That is all that you needed to say. All I needed. Guys, this page looks like such a mess. My object then was to show you by every civility in my power that I hope to obtain your forgiveness to lessen your ill opinion by letting you see that your proofs have been attended to. He literally changed for her. AKA, I changed for you. You are the reason that I'm a better man. Obsessed. Absolutely obsessed. Love chapter 58. Oh my gosh. Look at all of just the hearts that I drew. Okay, I'm gonna keep reading. I literally have so little left. Really want to just savor the last two chapters because I'm on chapter 60. I'm gonna not listen to the audiobook. Liz and Darcy are finally engaged and everybody knows. Liz asked Darcy how he started falling in love with her and he says, I cannot fix on the hour or the spot or the look or the words which laid the foundation. It's too long ago. I was in the middle before I knew that I had begun. <gasps> I don't care. That's literally the most romantic thing I've ever read in my entire life. Get you someone who falls in love with you for the lively- Oh my god. For the liveliness of your mind. Everyone who could immediately pin me as a pride and prejudice girl of my life got me so right. This is like the slow burn enemy to lovers of my dream. Last chapter, chapter 61. The end. Oh my gosh, I finished Pride and Prejudice. With the gardeners, they were always on the most intimate terms. Darcy as well as Elizabeth really loved them and they were both ever sensible of the warmest gratitude towards the persons who, by bringing her into Derbyshire, had been the means of uniting them. The end! Now I'm officially halfway through all the Austin novels. I absolutely loved it. Where will I rate this? Oh, it's so hard. I feel like this one is the most iconic one. I definitely see why. They don't make them like Austin love stories anymore, I have to say. I, I don't know where I would place it. That's so hard. Hard. I feel like Lizzie's probably the one that I relate to the least. I love how outspoken she is. I really appreciate that about Lizzie. And I just love her and Mr. Darcy and like, oh my gosh, the angst, the pining, the longing, the walks around the park. This book is actually falling apart the seams now because I rough handle my books like you wouldn't believe. Anyway, I think that that might be a wrap on this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. I do plan on reading the rest of the Austin awesome novel too. So let me know if you want to see me vlog and annotate them because I have the physical copies. I absolutely love annotating Austin. Let me know which one I should read next. Yeah, I am in fact a Pride and Prejudice girly to no surprise. Be sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. I will see you all next time. Bye!